this is the beginning stages of developing a concept design once you kind of already have the idea. You start with drawing your model or your figure as normal. Then you kind of adapt and exaggerate a little bit. Um, and what you're focusing on is motion and energy and exaggerating all that. And then you're going to try to work your final adaptation to create a creature out of it. In this case, it's a humanoid spider monster thing. Uh, that's kind of a little bit biotech as well. So um, what we want to do is early on make some decisions about what that's going to look like in the end and then uh, develop it uh, further on a larger scale so we can get some detail in there. The basic idea is that it should look a little bit human, but very spider-like as well. So I've got the uh, finished uh, early design on the left, and so we're going to try to reverse engineer this process. Start the same as every drawing with the gesture um, and progress into forms, which is what's going on now. And uh, we want to start with the larger forms of the head, torso, uh, pelvis, legs, and arms. And in this case, because the feet and hands are so prominent, I want to get those, hand those forms in, even though they're smaller forms, just so that it's done a little bit early. Um, as the drawing progresses, um, you're going to see a lot of uh, contour and a lot of smaller additional forms that aren't really there in any kind of figure uh, develop along with that. Um, so as quickly as possible, you want to start being very specific about everything and develop the drawing um, very clearly. One of the main differences in doing a design versus just doing an interesting drawing or an illustration is a design needs to include the entire figure head to toe, and you have to be very clear about everything. You can't hide. Um, so all of the structures need to be delineated as best that you can. Um, that's not to say that everything has to be perfect in the, in the design stage, uh, but you want to make an attempt to draw uh, as many details as possible. So as the design goes, I'm bringing in a little bit of human anatomy um, and exaggerating that a little bit to kind of create it to create more of a biotech feel. So I'm going to have a bunch of little kind of organic ropey um, forms go in, especially through the forearms and through the uh, legs and calves. And continue that on into the hands. And it's very simple to do that. You just lay a cylinder right on top of what you've already built. And uh, then to convey the idea that it's a little bit cylindrical, you can wrap um, cross contour lines around the forms. When you get into the um, legs and torso, you got to make a decision about which forms overlap which. I think in the uh, original drawing, I have the pelvis and legs kind of overlapping the torso, but in this drawing, I've adapted it so the torso is kind of in front, which I think is more spider-like anyway, um, and that the legs are kind of behind the torso. Even though it doesn't necessarily make sense spatially, um, it kind of makes more sense uh, structurally. Now, one of the things I'm exaggerating normal bone structure that you would find in a hand um, with the uh, carpals and metacarpals um, and inserting some extra forms in between them um, just so that they seem a little bit more spider-like and a little more mobile. Um, and I'm articulating each uh, joint as best as possible so that it's uh, very clear how these forms kind of progress. Um, one thing that you can do um, is mix different types of forms to give it interest. So far, it's mostly been cylindrical and organic forms, but I do want to introduce a few uh, box forms in there just to uh, break things up a little bit and emphasize certain areas. One of the important of drawing and design in general is, is variety. You don't want everything to kind of all be the same um, within any given design or drawing or from design to design. So if you draw a bunch of different concept designs, 
you don't want to make them all depend on cylindrical forms. You might want to have some that mix in that focus on box forms or um, or other types of forms. One of the things that I'm doing here in the hands is I'm mixing the box forms and the cylinder forms within uh, each joint so that they're somewhere between cylinder and box forms. They're like cylinders with corners. Um, and that can help you define the form and uh, set you up for uh, adding value and light later. If you have a box form, it's very easy to, to determine where the light should go, um, whichever side um, is in light. Uh, stays in the light, whatever's in shadow stays in shadow. And because you have a corner there, it's easy to define where that is. Um, so one of the things that you do when you uh, when you begin adding value, which is where I'm headed now, is you use it to help specify and define and um, refine forms. Um, so every stage that you're doing, you're kind of reobserving and changing what you um, what you have. And at this point um, in the drawing, my model has probably already sat down and gone. So most of what's going on is going to be out of my head a little bit. So um, drawing from your mind's eye kind of depends in large part on your uh, experience drawing uh, already. Um, so the more forms that you draw, the more still life objects that you draw, the more experience you have. Um, and the better you're going to be at, at layering forms over each other. So still life can sometimes seem like drudgery, but essentially that's what I'm doing here is I'm, I've got a uh, hundred different objects that are all stacked on top of each other. They just happen to be overlaid to make this kind of um, spidery form. One of the things that's nice about, um, about uh, drawing figures and stuff like that is uh, this grounding phase. They can feel like they're, they have weight and mass and they're sitting on or attached to the earth. Simplest way to ground something is to draw a shadow, uh, makes it immediately look like it's on the ground. One of the biggest problems with uh, most people's character design, at least um, when you start out, is that you have a floating character. Um, once you put a character on the ground, it exists in a space. And then that becomes a very powerful thing. Um, each form still has its own set of rules. It always has its light side and shadow side, it has its shadow core and reflected light. And being able to convey that within smaller forms is always a great thing. Um, it'll, it allows you to create a lot of dimension fairly quickly. Um, one of the things that was missing in my older design was uh, a lot of technical, uh, technological elements. So I'm adding like little wiry looking things that uh, it's just an idea to try to emphasize that biotech aspect of it rather than a fully organic form. I'm also taking this opportunity to articulate some of the joints a little bit better um, and to separate them out a little bit more to define some forms that I hadn't defined uh, in the original drawing. Um, and that's kind of the fun of refining a design is that you get an opportunity to um, do something different every time. So one of the, um, one of the aspects that I'm doing a little bit differently is uh, focusing, I've changed the direction of the light and I'm focusing in on uh, layering over those forms and being very specific about where those forms start and end. I've also changed the way that the arms and legs connect to the torso. And uh, I think those were important changes in this design phase. Um, I also kind of flattened out the figure and made it stand on level ground instead of on this angle. Um, and maybe that's a, a disadvantage, but it is what it is. And um, I'm still working on grounding it redefining everything. Um, the other thing too is that I kind of had these uh, solid eyes and uh, to make them a little more human or technological, even I've given all the eyes a, a sort of pupil here so that they seem a little bit creepier and a little bit more, more pointed. Um, 
when you go in and do um, large do value, you want to be sure to do large areas of value before you do small areas of value. Um, that way, your figure kind of progresses as a whole rather than in parts. Um, I've developed one side of the drawing more than the other in both of these situations. And honestly, I think that's OK, because they're still very specific. Um, you don't have to develop every single part of the drawing completely, uh, even for a concept design. You can leave some certain parts a little more sketchy um, and a little more undeveloped, and that's totally OK. Um, as long as you're taking the time to develop any um, critical areas fully, I think that's really what, you, what you're kind of after when you're doing a design. Um, and it's basically a decision-making process of, are you hiding aspects that you can't draw or haven't decided on, or are you showing off what you can do? You really want to show off what you can do and be very clear about the design. Um, at this point, what I'm trying to do is uh, define some of those shadow cores and work on some edges, get some grounding going, um, and you kind of see uh, things begin to stall out because the um, the texture of the uh, surface is kind of beginning to distract uh, from everything. So at this point, I've kind of decided what I need to do to finish out is to bind the edges and move into the last stage of the drawing and to work on some contour line. Um, and to do that, I'm going to switch to the pen tools because it's a much more precise line uh, within the drawing software. And there's not really a uh, a terribly smooth surface to work with, um, at least when you're working with uh, graphite uh, within Art Rage. Um, so instead, we're going to use the pen tool, and that's going to work out a lot better. Um, there's only just a little bit of anti aliasing and smoothing to kind of make things uh, a little more accurate to the way they work. So, what I'm going to do here is go around a lot of the contour lines, almost every contour line. But the trick to doing that is to keep them light and make sure that they don't take away that from any of the work that I've done. Um, so I'm also going to put some lines on the in, inner forms and on shadow cores um, to de-emphasize the fact that I'm going around and basically outlining the figure. If I, if I did a straight outline, it would flatten everything, and it would be very counterproductive to all the hard work that I've done to create a dimensional figure. Um, but I want to be clear about everything and where the edges are, so this is going to help me do that. Um, one of the sim simplest things you can do with line work is just to overlap lines, and that can help you out a lot with uh, defining your forms. And so every line that I do here uh, kind of comes inside the contour so that uh, lines are allowed to overlap, and that increases the amount of dimension that I'm getting using one line. Um, I'm also going to go back through and just emphasize some of the cross contour lines that I thought were critical um, in order to create some some of these forms overall. And then I'm going to be a little bit more specific on the lesser developed side uh, about where these lines overlap um, to kind of make some decisions on how that should go. Um, and I'm actually going to use a little bit of hatching and value in the head to kind of create the the specificity that the head needs. Um, you'll see here that I'm coming in with a lot of cross contour lines uh, around this side just to be sure that the uh, the forms are well defined and as defined as they need to be. Um, at this point, you know, I want to be sure and go through and finish out the figure and get to all of the, the contour lines that, that need to be out there. With some of the uh, toes, I'm not going to develop them as far. Um, I'm just going to leave them a little sketchy, which is totally OK. Um, so here I'm now making some decisions that I hadn't made about where these forms overlap and how they overlap, um, especially in this lesser developed side. And uh, that's going to be good in case I want to go back and develop everything a little bit later. I can add some forms even now. So. I don't want you to feel like you're kind of stuck with what you have. It's never too late in the game to be increasingly specific and to develop your drawings even further than they were. So now that I'm nearing the end of it, I um, hope you enjoyed it and um, have fun making your own designs. 
and uh, you know either reverse engineering or copying some designs and uh, and enjoy the project.